So now you have employers that they're now thinking, why the hell do I want to spend all this money on office space, mm -hmm. on all these leasing? You've got the employee saying, why the hell do I want to drive into work for 40 minutes mm -hmm. when we can now do it virtually and we can do it just as good? And here's Mike Kim. Welcome, Mike. I have logic, I have sequences to everything, but I'm just like, there are certain things you just are not going to learn unless you go do it. No. And I think that's the one thing I can say has been the biggest contributor to my success because I'll learn if I go do something. And if I learn too much about it, then I hesitate. Yeah. Yeah. If I, if I think too much about it, I hesitate. I used to have, you know, all these books like, you know, the something for dummies book like you know uh saving money for dummies uh facebook ads for dummies uh you know any like talking to a girl for dummies but blah, 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 for dummies right golf for dummies and i just sit there and read it and i'm like this is this is ridiculous i just gotta go to the golf range yeah i just gotta run a facebook ad i just gotta you know actually try to save money yeah you know and it is funny because i think education like like programs us a certain way. And then you mentioned technology, which is interesting. We'll get into that in a, in a little bit, but I think of technology and I think about how you went into these boardrooms and you didn't need a degree for that stuff, like you said. And what's interesting is that I see a parallel now, right now with that, because you don't get degrees in social media marketing, but there are no degrees in that stuff that I know of, right? right. In marketing there are, right? So this is a completely unregulated industry. Like as far as I know, there's, there, you can't even get a degree for consulting. And it's, it's a huge, it's a multi-billion dollar profession. You know, I'm a consultant, you're a consultant or a coach. There, there's no, you know, academic degree. Right. And so it's just like, you're sort of paid for what you actually think and know and what kind of results you can get for people. Right. Which is pretty cool. So, I mean, all of you who are listening or watching, you know, you're ready to study everything at the wazoo and you're like, Hey, just go help get results for people and it yeah. might work out. Yeah. And, and it, you said something, it's like, you've got to go do it before you're, before you're ready to do it. And here's the thing, nothing has ever been done when someone was ready to do it. I'm t <laughs> parenting. I know you're not a parent, uh, yeah. but as a parent, I can tell you this. I don't know a single parent that said, okay, I'm, I'm not going to have kids until I'm ready, until I know everything there is, and then I'm going to go have kids. Otherwise, you would never have kids because mm -hmm. and anything in life is like that. You cannot, you cannot wait until you're ready because you will, <laughs> you will never start ever. I don't care. That's what, what I'm. That's what I'm doing. I'm reverse engineering that and <laughs> learning too much about kids, so I don't want to have them. <laughs> that's the problem. If you learn too much, you never want to have them. Exactly, and so that's how I'm not. I'm going to make sure that I don't have kids. You and know, one of so. the one of the scary things about kids that I've found out, they reproduce. Oh gosh. Yeah. And then you got grandkids. Yeah. Oh God. Yes, that's scary. Yeah. I mean, I love. I love my nephews. I don't want to be their dad. Yeah. I love my, I love my granddaughter and that's the nice thing I can give her back. Yeah. That's what I do with the kids. That's what I do with my nephew. Just give him, hey, <laughs> take him back. <laughs> yeah. 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 Give them all the stuff. So, um, so it's interesting, right? So the, the, that's a mindset shift. I think that anyone can kind of take away for this. Like, Oh, I need a, I need a degree. I need a certification to do what I do. And we have a lot of people who are listening in this personal brand space and the mindset shift is just, just go do it right? You just got to go do it because then you'll, you'll learn as you do it. Technology is really interesting, isn't it? Because now everyone's got, you know, phones and, and everything. And, you know, I grew up a, a kind of religious kid. Um, I went to church a lot when I was a kid and, you know, you're in Texas, so it's church land over there. But I swear, man, like the new religion is this self-help, self-motivation stuff and, you know, you look on Instagram or social, any other social media network and you just all this cotton candy self-help stuff. Yeah. And yet people don't take action. Mm -mm. And so it's like, it's like the same thing I'm talking about in my little joke about kids. I think I eventually will want kids. Well, who knows? 
but it's like you educate yourself so much about what you're supposed to feel and mindfulness and mindset shifts and think thinking bigger and technology helps us do that. But it also helps us learn so much to the point where people just feel like just because I learned about, you know, lifting weights or a better diet, that's enough. And then they go, don't. And that's not. They don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so I know that you've you've talked in work, obviously, in technology and stuff like that. What do you see happening with tech and all that stuff with with the way that's shaping our mindsets? I'm telling you, uh, we are at a perfect storm right now between both the meetup of technology and the huge explosion, the huge catalyst, the huge, the huge change uh, of the pandemic. And again, technology, I've been in technology for over 30 years. I know I see things that are out there. I kind of can vision, you know, vision things that are happening. And I'm telling you, we have to be ready to pivot and we have to be ready to pivot big. Uh, you know, we've got to learn how to think outside the box of what we're doing. And I'm not talking about just learning to do Zooms and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm talking about forgetting everything you know about the workforce and how we do things. It's going to change. I mean, if you, so let's go back and look at some of these other big changes. So like when the internet came out, look at how much that disrupted stuff from mail service, US, your post office. I mean, it, it affected everything. You look at, uh, oh God, what was it? Uh, uh, Blockbuster. You remember going right. to a Blockbuster? Yeah. Streaming, it's completely changed that. You know, you look at Kodak, you know, they, mm-hmm. back in the you know, 80s, they ruled things. Then when digital stuff came out, it, uh, you know, it took that company out. And I think you're going to see that type of change from a technology standpoint, because we have the technology, we've had it, but now we're being forced to use it. And I'm telling you, things are going to change. You know, you're going to see it first in schools. Uh, I don't think you're ever going to see a college or even uh, my daughter's, you know, or my granddaughter's, you know, uh, elementary school, I don't think you're ever going to see schools even go back to normal. It's going to all go. Really? I don't think you'll ever, you're, they, they might try it, but I don't think, I personally don't think you're ever going to see it the same again. Uh, everything is going to change from sports to events to anything, you know, the te- and not, not only do we have the technology now and we're being forced to use it, but this is also forcing a whole bunch of people to have unbelievable imagination and create even more tech faster to meet up with these new demands. I mean, you do, you know, I, I do a lot of sports and uh, mm-hmm. I do a lot of cycling and a lot of running. I use this uh, thing called Zwift. It's a virtual reality. So I have computer basically sensors hooked up to my, my site, my bike and to my treadmill and I ride and I run with people from all over the world. There is no need to go outside. There's no need to do this. Matter of fact, this last week and I got my ass kicked, but I did the stage one of the Tour de France. <laughs> I placed That's crazy. So out of fifty four hundred people that were in my group, I placed forty four forty four hundred. <laughs> Okay. Well, whatever. It's just the fact you could complete it. My, my pandemic kind of training that... plan has not done. <laughs> done well, th- but that's that's really interesting though because technology, right? Like, okay, I I can see that with schools, but then that creates a secondary question, which is like, what are parents going to do with their kids all day at home if they're not going to school, right? So that's another thing. Well, are they going to work from home? Is everyone going to work from home? The sporting events. You know, I love football. I don't like going to football games. It's freezing yeah. outside. Yeah. So I get that. I don't know if movie theaters will survive. Yeah. Like, seriously, why go to a movie theater? I mean, it's good for the studios because they clean up. They make, you know, $10 a, a ticket, $15 a ticket. But, you know, the I, I think, and this is assuming that the pandemic where there's a va- vaccine that comes out. So you're thinking right. this, even if the world it's, feels it, safe again, you think it's, it's we're past that point. Once you let the cat out of the bag, you're never going to get it yeah. back in. The, the okay. genie's out of the bottle. It's, yeah, right. So now you have employers that they're now thinking, why the hell do I want to spend all this money on office space, mm-hmm. on all these leasing? You've got the employees saying, why the hell do I want to drive into work for 40 minutes mm-hmm. when we can now do it virtually and we can do it just as good? And I'm, and I'm, th- I'm thinking virtually everything's going to change, you know, from events that we do. You know, the things that we know, and we do a lot of stuff with events, that's going to completely change on, on how we do events. And, we, and we've got to position ourselves because, I mean, uh, matter of fact, I think this coming up weekend, uh, Tony Robbins is doing his first uh, virtual uh, UPW. Yeah. And uh, I saw some pictures from behind the scenes. 
he's got a 360 degree wall of think of him as a zoom yeah. Zoom things. 360 degrees. He can go all the way around. And if he wants to uh, talk with you, Mike, he's going to go over there and push a button or push the screen. And now he's talking to you like he's just like you're in an event. So why is he going to go and try to rent out a huge space mm-hmm. in Vegas or wherever he's going to do it in Dallas, wherever he's going to do it? Why the hell as a consumer, are you going to go buy a plane ticket? Are you going to rent a hotel when you mm-hmm. can simply sit down and have the same virtual reality? experience i I just think this again i think we're at the the point of the technology being there and the pivot of the need the explosion Mm -hmm. to push us over the edge 